Hello internet, this is the truth. As Ed Snowden says, the internet is a world of potential and possibility, but it can also become a murky, dangerous place. Ross Albrecht's proper hardcore life imprisonment gives us an opportunity to discuss who does the internet belong to, them or us. Here is some truths. Prosecutors said Ross Ulbricht was the digital kingpin of an underground website called The Silk Road, set up so that anyone could buy or sell anything, virtually anonymously. The jury agreed. They also believed it had become a global drugs marketplace. It's weird how um, drugs is such a sort of a frontline issue for the imposition of authority. And it's always validated by, well, you know, we don't want people taking drugs. Why? Well, because we're worried about their health. But like, if you look broadly at the policies of, say, the American government or the UK government, health don't seem to be uttermost in their considerations with, like, you know, with their energy policies, their war policies, their privacy policies. It's like they don't give a fucking shit about us. All I think they care about is new markets, new economies and new power structures emerging that they don't have control of. That's why young Aaron Schwartz was basically killed by the American government and that's why Ross Ulbricht is in prison. It took just three and a half hours of deliberation to find Ulbricht guilty of all seven counts against him, from drug trafficking to money laundering. In a way, Ross Ulbricht is the American dream. He's an entrepreneur. He saw a new market. He went for it. I mean, that's like, is that any different from the genesis of Coca-Cola or General Motors or Philip Morris. General Motors kill their customers, Philip Morris kill their customers, Coca-Cola kill their customers and workers. This guy is just an entrepreneur. He's simply embracing the explicit structure and policies of the United States capitalism. There's no difference at all. There is difference. Drugs is illegal. And of course in the court case they trot out the parents of like, oh my per you know, like obviously it's sad when people die of drug overdoses, but the American government don't care about people dying of drug overdoses. If they did, they wouldn't have introduced crack into African American communities in the 80s as a sort of weird wacky experiment. Ulbricht amassed an $18 million fortune from the Silk Road, which facilitated more than 1 million drug deals. Yeah, I think people were taking drugs before Ross Ulbricht and yeah, I think people are still taking drugs after Ross Ulbricht. So in conclusion, Ross Ulbricht is basically nothing to do with anything except a young entrepreneur that's ventured into new areas of power. Let me tell you what they care about, the FBI, the CIA, all these eagle badge stars and striped badged institutions. You not having power. You can't get power through democracy. We've seen that. You can't get power through demonstration. We're seeing that. We're seeing that police forces are militarizing. One potential way where populations could get power is the ability to organize globally en masse, like a new nation. That's what we're witnessing now. New territories are emerging and they don't know how to control it. So there's kind of a gold rush mentality because they're not in complete control of who the entrepreneurs, who the pioneers, who the geniuses are. So what they've got to do is make sure that they control the geniuses and the pioneers. We don't mind Steve Jobs. That broadly fits into our mentality. We can do deals with Apple so that we can spy on you and capture your data and information. Now this Ross Albrecht, I'm not suggesting he was some sort of like, brilliant martyr, but he was using using cyberspace and internet technology in new and interesting ways that the government couldn't control. That's why he's being punished. No one, least of all the American government, give a fuck about whether your children are dying of drug overdoses. They will dance on the graves of your dead children for a single dollar of profit for one of their big partners in big business. The dark or deep web. Think of the entire internet as an iceberg. Why? <laughs> Do just think of it as an iceberg. All right, it's not helping because it's not an iceberg. Shut up! Everything above the water is what we would call the surface web. Think of the internet as an iceberg, but with sticks in it. And stuck on the sticks is Bing, Facebook, Google, Yahoo, and that safari thing that young kids don't use anymore. But below the water, that huge iceberg, that's the deep web. Now that's got question marks on it. <laughs> the deep web. I don't, I, this is really, this is brass eye. Making it tough to crack, but researchers are finding portals to get inside. A difficult hunt through uncharted territory where terrorists have been lurking far too long. Yep, it's terrorists. Silk Road, a lot of ISIS members, being devout Muslims, they just want to sit around and do crack all day. I mean, it's such a muddled and confused piece of analysis. What are people scared of in America? They're scared of their children dying, drugs, and they're scared of having their heads cut off, ISIS. So what should we say that, that Silk Road was? Sort of 
cut off your head, kill your kids dot com? Brilliant, sold. <laughs> well, like, your children are under a lot more peril because of the behaviours of massive corporations and the American government than any entrepreneurial, activist, tiny terrorist group. That is some terrifying true news. Subscribe here. a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Truths is like the news. If the news was true, I want some truths. Let's have some truths.